present day uh, um, struggles. Uh, we got reports here, it says here, on Friday the 10th of August, a video surfaced online showing Cameroonian security forces shooting dead at least 12 unarmed people during an operation uh, in a village in the country's far north region. In the, in the video filmed in uh, May 2016, a number of villagers are forced to lay in front of a wall before soldiers open fire on them. This is the second video to emerge from Cameroon in less than a month, depicting members of the security forces carrying out what is called extrajudicial killings. The Cameroonian government is currently battling uh, what is called armed extremist groups, um, one of them, of course, Boko Haram, in the remote north of the country, and also violently suppressing an armed rebellion in what is referred to as Anglophone, the Anglophone part of the country. And I'm, I'm assuming that that is the part of the, uh, the country or the territory that you are talking about. What exactly is happening with your people? What is the relationship with Cameroon uh, as we understand it and with President Bia? Um, the, the situation in my homeland called the Southern Cameroons or Ambazonia is unspeakable. It's this unspeakable horror that is taking place there. It is just like the preparation for the genocide in Rwanda or the slaughtering in Srebrenica where people were silent until when it happened. We are trying to let the world know that there is genocide that is taking place there. Yes. Whole villages are being scorched earth. Octogenarians are being burned alive. Nursing mothers are being burned alive. And who is doing this? These are being done by the people we consider terrorists because no military in the world which is supposed to defend its own people can do this type of things to the same people. So we see those doing this. The forces of Mr. Polbia as the real terrorists. They are terrorizing our people. They are sending them as refugees. They are slaughtering them every day. We are having at least a hundred deaths every day, which means for a week there are at least 700. The world is not reporting what is happening. There are mass graves all over the place. You just spoke about two videos that uh, um, uh, emerged from, north, from the north of La Republic to Cameroon. Now you tell me, after watching those videos, how do you think my people can live with these people? These people are savages. At this modern time, it is not only an abrogation of the Geneva Convention that you arrest people when you've already taken someone into custody. You have to make sure that person has his or her rights read to them and you have to treat them in a humane way. Now, we agree on that. I mean, that is um, underwritten in the UN Charter. Let's talk about the political situation and uh, the issues around things like language rights, things like economic rights, things like um, citizenship. What about the, those issues Good. Are, are affecting the people of Southern Cameroon? And why is it um, an intractable problem? Why is it something that cannot be negotiated? The first thing I want you to understand is that we came into a union. When we came into that union, we came as two equal parties. It was like Zanzibar and Tangayika coming together. If it's going to work, we stay together. If it's not going to work, we'll not stay together. Do you speak the same language? We don't speak the same language. I'm coming to that. We are, why we call ourselves Anglophones? Because we are brought up in the Anglo-Saxon tradition. Our legal system is the common law. Theirs is the civil law. This is one country. They have a bijura system. You commit a crime, a common law crime in our area, you will be treated differently. So if you take a citizen from La Republic to Cameroon, from the French-speaking part, bring to our area and they commit a crime, and they take them to court, they will be confused because the whole system is novelty to them. Now, our educational system is not the same. From primary, from, from kindergarten, right up to university level is different. We have a system where we have a student union which they don't have. I was, for example, the first student union president in the first Anglo-Saxon university in that country where we have a student union president who represents the, 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 the rights of the students, you can go and sit in the student senate or the, the student council and talk on behalf of your colleagues. But they don't have that. They are not used to that. These are people who have been brought up in a way that you don't question authority. No matter what is being done, you just have to be dumb. Are you saying that there is no democracy in Cameroon uh, as we understand it? Democracy has never started in that country. Even when we call for one, democracy, 
You have an octogenarian who has been in power as president for 36 years, and then count the other number of years he's been the power behind the power. From director of special cap, uh, director of cabinet at the presidency to secretary general at the presidency to prime minister of the republic to president of the republic, all imposed by la, Repo by, by, uh, la republic Francaise on the people of uh, French Cameroon and later on on the people of Cameroon. And what about? I, I can understand you fight with the government, and I can understand you fight with the elites. But what of the ordinary people of Cameroon? Are you able to have a program of solidarity? Is there a common platform around which you can agree uh, that it's ordinary citizens of both territories that actually need to be empowered, that needs democracy, that needs openness, uh, that needs progress, uh, and that needs freedom? Good and evil cannot mix together. The people of La Republic du Cameroon have proven to us time and time again that we do not count. There is no way we can live together with these people. The only reason they are still tolerating us, some of them, is because of our natural resources. Let me assure you, they have been slaughtering our people for more than two years now, on what abated. Na what natural resources um, reside in southern Cameroon? The oil, the, black, the case of the black gold, which everybody is aware of, comes from our homeland. We supply food, we feed Gabon, we feed Central African Republic, feed even La Republic du Cameroon, feed part of Equatorial Guinea. Agriculturally, our soil is extremely rich. Because of the rich soil that comes from Mongo Ndeme, what they call Mount Fako, that is not all. We've got gold in our land. We've got diamond. We've even got natural resources that have not been, you know, at, at this particular moment, refined. I, before I leave you, I'm going to give you a document on the natural resources that are based in our homeland. So the real problem, as Jerry John Rawlings, the former president of Ghana, said, it's not that these people want us to live together. It is that the moment oil was discovered in 1975, the French say, hey, listen, they've just discovered black gold there. We need now to make sure that these people become subhuman. So these guys are not keeping us. Listen, if we had nothing like the Gambia, they would have let us go. Uh, doctor, I come where I, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you. I am of the firm belief that politics are about sets of interests, and the fact that you have resources is probably the reason why there is conflict. What I'm trying to understand is what is your political objective? What is it that you want? Uh, what is the orientation of your movement? Um, you uh, see the African National Congress as allies. You see the South African Communist Party as allies. How would you describe your outlook in a post-Cold War uh, situation? I am assuming that you don't want to be ruled uh, by Britain or by France. You want self-determination. You want independence. What exactly is the political system that you seek um, and that you think will bring justice to your people? Um, in, in a nutshell, uh, we, are, we are seeking total and unconditional independence. Unconditional because in 1961 we were given a conditional independence. Do you want independence by joining? We want total independence. First, we are about 8.5 million people. We are larger than a number of count, existing countries in the world, including Fiji, uh, uh, um, uh, the Gambia, and others, even within, the, state, within the, the continent of Africa. Secondly, we want to be a truly democratic state. We don't want a state with a little D, where people just organize consultative elections, which are like referendum, where at the end it ends with bloodshed, people will slaughter themselves. Or presidents in, who are in power for 36 years. Exactly, or people slaughter themselves in Kenya. After innocent civilians have died, then the two uh, uh, warring parties come together to make peace. And where, now that they were making peace, like in Kenya, what will happen to all of those who have died when they would have made that peace a long time ago and avoid that type of a situation? So we are looking, we are, we are trying to create a truly democratic society. Now, what do we expect from the rest of the world? We, we, we know that it is difficult at this particular moment in the world. The world keeps saying that they want to bring the world closer. But you can't bring people who are of divergent opinions. You need to understand that. Czechoslovakia was how long? Yugoslavia was how long? Now, there are little states that are not equal. Like Serbia, population-wise, natural resources-wise, even intellectual-wise, as the people of Ambazonia. So why is anyone telling us that we are not good enough to be a state? Look at South Sudan. Nobody wanted South Sudan to get away from Sudan until these young men and women breathed it with uh, the late John Garan and went to the bush, carried up arms, and started fighting. It's the same thing with Eritrea. Nobody would have loved Eritrea to split away from or leave mighty Ethiopia, but they have to fight that way. And that is exactly what we are doing. While we are telling the world that there is genocide, we don't think we need to fold our arms. We need to do something. If the Nkutu Wasizwe was never launched in this country, 
I can assure you that no matter what the world would have done, apartheid will still have been in place. Final question to you. What is your status at the United Nations? Do you have any observer station, uh, status? Does the United Station, the United Nations recognize you as a republic uh, or as a territory that has the right to self-determination? The United Nations is a home of interest. France has veto power. The United Kingdom is ashamed for what they did to us and for what they have done to the continent of Africa, just like what France have done to French Africa. The United States, on the other hand, is playing the game of supporting its allies who are members of NATO, while China is more interested in coming in and taking a different method in looting African resources. The Russians are aloof. They are watching from the other end. So which United Nations are we going to count on? These are, it is, they, are, they, have met, they have banded themselves like a, a club of bandits, just like the African Union. What we are saying is that we must accept our right to total and unconditional independence before expecting any international body to come to play to do something. Otherwise, someone will not be 36 years in power, rig an election, and then you still want him to, he's still going to sit in power. When the United States condemned the rigging of elections in, in Cameroon, of recent, what did they do? Francis Cook was there in 1992, they read the elections. They knew the consequences. The next day, they were the same one giving letter of accreditation to the same BIA who read elections. Let them stop all this hypocrisy around the world. Unfortunately, no one has the right to take another one's life. But as the Nkutu Wasiswe taught us, and as the SPLA and the EPLF has taught us, the only way you can make the world to get up from slumber, I'm sorry, is to pick up arms and start fighting and slaughtering one another. That is unfortunate, but that is where they have put us now to try to protect our own people, our octogenarians, our physically challenged, and even the unborn. Our, our kids are not able to go to school for more than two years. Do we like it? No. Because the rest of the way is dormant, is docile. They are waiting for another Clinton moment when he will come and apologize that, oh, we took our, ball, our eye off the ball in Rwanda. No, they didn't. They were scared of what happened in Mogadishu. So they didn't want to commit U.S. forces to stop the genocide. This is the time to do something. Kofi Annan failed. Boutros Ghali failed. And all other U.N. Secretary Generals have failed because they are doing the bidding of the member of the Security Council that imposed them upon the rest of the world. We can no longer sit quiet and allow our entire generation to be extinct. We are compelled to fight to the last man to free ourselves. And that is why I am in South Africa. Like as I said before, because in Southern Africa, from the MPLA to the ANC to the SACP to SWAPO, if you look within the Southern African region, even ZANO and ZAPO, you will know the cause of liberation. This is the heaven of it in Africa, just like you have it in Latin America. And if Southern Africa does not rise up as a people and live up to their responsibility, they will be helping to perpetuate a genocide in Ambazonia. And I can tell you, they will be held responsible one way or the other for knowing what to do, they did nothing. All right, that is where we leave it. Thank you so very much. That was, of course, Dr. Ebenezer Akangwa. He is the leader of the Southern Cameroon Youth League and also the commander-in-chief of the Southern Cameroonian Defense Force, speaking to us, of course, about the plight of the people of that country and their right uh, to fight for self-determination. And, of course, he's saying that at the heart of the conflict is, of course, uh, the fight over natural resources, including oil and gold and uh, they are essentially going around the world and trying to convince various organizations particularly former liberation movements who've been involved in struggles for independence to come to their aid thank you thank you for having me i am indeed grateful thank you so much i really appreciate it thank you so much so you were able to stream it okay fantastic thank you